Good morning, everybody. Hello. It's good to be out here on this beautiful Sunday morning. All right. We're going to do a couple songs for you. I know this one. I don't know this one. We're going to try it. How about that? Let's do Amazing Grace first.
we're gonna do it. All right, let's do it. If I mess it up, I'm just gonna walk away and let y'all fix it. <laughs> you, you know, Warren, I'll do the I'll do the first couple of lines and back up and just jump in there and we'll do it. All right. Y'all give a big hand for Big Jim Nolan up there. Yeah. The wonderful soul right there.
All right, I feel like I'm stumbling all over everything. I'm gonna let no, you know. No, 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 no,
Cool. I appreciate y'all. So you got Chrissy, Woo! Big Jim, you got Marcus on drums, and you got Big Time Ed, who's the RCBC worship leader on bass today. So appreciate y'all. So Redemption Community Biker Church, we're a biker church in uh, Holly Hill, which is just outside Daytona Beach. We have church service every Saturday at 6.30. Pastor Frankie, see, now that you're wearing that cowboy hat, cowboy easily yes, identifiable. Uh, you got Pastor Frankie, he's our, he's our pastor. Jim's our outreach director, worship leader, and uh, Jack, of all trades. Jack of all trades is myself. World famous announcer dude. World famous announcer guy. Um, but hey. Uh, one, thank you, world famous Iron Horse Saloon, for yeah. having us come out every. So Sunday. every third Sunday of the month, we're out here and we have a continental breakfast, also known as Dunkin' Donuts and coffee oh. at ten. <laughs> ten thirty is is wor worship starts, and then uh, we jump into the message. But again, uh, Redemption Community Biker Church. We're on the internet, www rcbcdaytona.org and uh, if you want to know more or just come over tap me on the shoulder and I'll, I'll give you all the information you need and uh, but yeah we're or, here or, or and anybody with RCBC shirts on yeah or anybody with RCBC shirts on yeah I'm not the sole provider of that information so anyways Wade Jennings family thank you so uh, much really I appreciate y'all if you haven't been hey I was at the show with Jim and uh, watched the whole show, it was absolutely amazing. Uh, went, did a deep dive. If you guys haven't heard or, you don't, or, or you're not familiar with Willie Jennings, go on the internet and just start watching his videos and uh, make sure you have some time allotted because you're gonna go and uh, you're just gonna be captivated and you're gonna be sitting there and you're gonna be watching. So uh, some great messages and again, total blessing to be up here um, to see you up here, Amen. Yeah. Uh, being part of RCBC's worship team, <laughs> but I appreciate it, man. Did I get everything, brother? Sounds pretty good. I think we got everything. And Rex, where's Rex at? They'll be coming up in a second, but I uh, might want to get them joints warmed up. So hey, <laughs> do me a favor though. Look to your left, right, front, and back. Give your neighbors a howdy, a head nod, a handshake, a fist bump. Welcome to the world famous Iron Horse Saloon. RCBC on the road. Woo!
in just about another week or week and a half or so, it'll be 32 years since I decided God was real. Since I decided that my way wasn't right, and since he decided that I got a street education that money can't buy. You cannot read a book to learn how to live a life. You cannot learn about living both sides of the tracks in anything without living it and doing it. And what people would doubt what you say, but not what you do. We all go through different storms, and I know all too well how challenging it can be. Just in serving God, I'm not going to get into all the stuff before that because I was on the other road. But just since that, it turns out that even though I didn't really believe in the God back then, I was working for the enemy. I didn't mean to, but I was. And when I changed sides and went with God, even my friends, the, the people, the Italian people I hung out with, I still had respect because that's the way it was back then. And they knew I'd be just as loyal to my Lord as I ever was to any of them. But all hell broke loose. They did not want to lose one of God's better world. I mean, you don't need that God stuff. You know, it's cool. You can, you can do what you want. Right. Come on for the boat and hang out. Let's go take a ride. Let's go do something. Right. Here, try this. Trust me, you'll like it. No, I was wrong. The things I did, the relationships I had, everything just went into an empty hole that I just couldn't fill. It wasn't until I said, yes, Lord, that that hole was filled up and I got peace, I got contentment, and I didn't care if the storm was going on. At that particular time, I had one bike, and I had a room in my shop that I could still sleep in. I'd lost my house, I'd lost the family, I'd lost just about everything by then. Within 30 days, it was back. That don't mean my life got perfect, because when you say yes, Lord, and you step up and you get real, you got a battle going on. You gotta prove yourself. These churches that don't tell you, or accept Jesus, he loves you, your life will be perfect. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna do anything for anybody, anywhere, you gotta do something. And you're gonna get challenged. You can't be a poser, a wimp. Hang around, man. You've got to show what you're made of. You've got to stand up and do what's right. That's how you follow God. You follow. You want to be a rebel? You want to be rebellious? Frankie talked on this quite some time back. Even here in America, it has changed where they don't want to hear about God. They don't want to hear about this or this. It's offensive to some. So rebel against that. Stand up and start sharing the love and showing the love and rebel against what the world has become. You will get through the storms. But as believers, any of you that are, I don't know all of you, the ones that are, though, we should know at least of all of God's promises. Now, it's really hard to believe in those sometimes when, when the storms kind of happen, isn't it? But we know about his mercy and his grace because I know what I deserve, and I'm glad that he didn't give it to me. He has given me so much mercy, so much grace. I've got such blessings going on. It's not exactly what I like all the time. But I'll tell you what, I got peace. I have peace in the middle of the storm. Yeah. Amen, brother. I keep on going. I do the best I can. Amen, brother. I don't always know what to do, and sometimes I get in my own way, and I start thinking about my own thoughts, and I get all tripped up. So take one day at a time. Don't do like me and take two and end up tripping over one. <laughs> get out there and do what you know you're supposed to do. And in part, it's, Sorry, it's about brother. respect and caring. Listen to somebody else's opinion. They're all going through different storms. We, we have different problems, each and every one of us. Sometimes we got 15 problems at a time going on. It seems like it's never ending. But you will get through it. You will get through it with the love of God and acceptance of Christ. But like I said, the enemy's going to step up and he's going to attack through your friends. He'll attack through your finances, your sickness, your well, basically your family, your, even your church folks sometimes, they'll start rumors, they'll start gossip, they'll get you to feeling bad, they'll get you a little depressed, a little sad, because it ain't looking like you think it should look. And I was raised by a lovely mom. She adopted me when I was four. I come out of a situation again I won't get into at this time. But it turned out years later, I said, Joe, I accepted Christ. She says, yeah, I know. So what, that's it? You, you've been telling me I need to go to church. That's it, that's it, huh? nothing, just, I know. Yes, sir. Well, how do you know? It's just because I've been thanking God for 38 years for my Christian man, my boy. Amen. She Amen. believed, she didn't care what the storm, she didn't care what kind of anything 
immoral, illegal, crooked, or anything else that I was into, she knew that God was going to bring me through that. I did not know in 1999 where it ended up buying a motel that went belly up and the only people left were three homeless people. I says, oh no, we did it, huh? I says, yeah, baby, we got a shelter. So for the next 20 years, my late wife and I, we ran a shelter. It was a no charge. Like RCBC, it was a non-paid, it's all volunteer ministry. And that's what it's about. It's not about the dollars or putting on a show, man. it's about sharing the love and showing it. That's right. Helping somebody else get Amen. through a storm that they're going through because you've gone through it. And we all deal with different people at different times because of it. But the pressure will come up. And then sometimes it gets too much. And we forget that we've got the promises of God. We forget that we can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens us. All things, not some. And we start backing down. We went out. We, we kick back a little bit. And then we start worrying. And then we lose it. It's time to leave that behind. We need to make sure that we do not forget about his promise. See, God don't lie. And sometimes, as we back down and we start kind of giving it up, in a way we're calling God a liar. So, man, you ain't got the power to handle this. Yep. But he does. And when you start believing and you get real with God, he steps in and he does a fight for you, man. You put your hand in your pocket and you'll take him out and he'll make things happen. I've shared with some of you before that in the last 25 years or so, I've managed to flatline, I've managed to have heart attacks, doctors and me were in a disagreement of how I should change my life or not. Although, I've also learned that because of that and bills and storms and things that come along, I know how to get you into foreclosure. I don't know how to get you out, but I know somebody that does. And he got us through that and we not only made sure that place was covered, he paid it off nine years early. That's God, that's not me, I'm not that smart. You know what? God is good when you're doing it right for the right reason. Not to get a pat on the back, not to get money out of it, just doing it because it's your reasonable service. You'd be amazed as you look back how much God will do for you. The scriptures say that we live, I don't know, 70, 80 years, life full of trouble or problems or things going on, and then we fly away, it says, or, well, fly out, we die. Well, there should be no fear of death. If you're truly a believer, if you truly accept that Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, death does not have a hold on you. Because when it's your time, it's going to be so awesome, so much better. Words don't describe what you're going to get. But we have to weather the storms of life. It's up to us. It's like a test you take over and over and over. You go through this test until you prove yourself. For those of you that do ride, a prospect don't walk up there and say, hey, man, I like your motorcycle, man. Give me a patch. So forget you. You go through it. You prove yourself. Some take a, a month or two. Some can take a year. But each of us are different, so don't be judging each other either. Some of us learn to walk quicker than others. Give us our own time. Lift each other up. Help each other get through. Help each other learn. We just need a little more love and a little more caring through to Christ and the blood that we shed. And guess what? I got some news for you because I've heard in different areas that I've been to and different places I've traveled that preachers got it made. I got news for you. Preachers got troubles too. They get the same troubles that you get, sometimes more and sometimes 15 of them because they're taking on everybody else's plus their own. And yet they got to get out there. So you know what? All of us are equal playing ground, man. We got the same stuff going on. We lift each other up. There's nobody better than or lower than as far as riches. The only real riches that counts is the ones that God gives you. You don't have to have a lot of money. Sometimes you'll find the poor people are the most giving because they've been there. They know what it's like. And when they have extra to give it, you see, God just wants to give you so much that you never run out as you give others what you can. Now, I don't mean go around giving away everything you own. If you're doing that, that's on you. If God says to slip something and slide, then okay. But don't be giving it away thinking you're getting a brownie point out of it. That's right. Make sure you're doing it for the right reason and for the right purpose. But you can't outgive God. Right. And he can also do something that the governor can't do, the president can't do. He can He, he, he can give you a full pardon. He can expunge your record. Man, he can clean it up. You've got a clean slate going on. Nobody else can do that. I'm clean. Ain't nothing going on. I got nothing I'm ashamed of, nothing I'm embarrassed about. 
I have no regrets of anything, and I thank God that he has taught me many lessons of what not to do and how to avoid doing them that I can maybe share with somebody in need. But it's not so that you've got a, a whole bunch of stories to tell, because some of you know I've got about a thousand I can tell, and well, another thousand I won't. Some things just need to be left in the closet and left alone. Amen. Statue of limitations, I'm pretty sure, has run out, just in case. You never know. And I know that I look around here, and again, whoever may be watching online, some of you have just come through a storm. Now here, uh, even physically, oh, we just came through the hurricanes over here. I've only been here three years. I've got to go through four storms already. I don't like it much at all. But by the grace of God, I didn't get one drop of water in my house. All my neighbors flooded. Now I can't explain it, but that's the way it is. You know what? It is great to watch him work. It's great to know that you can make it through the storm if you have that positive attitude. Not the attitude of defeat, not depression, not giving up. You have to know and act like you are a winner. Pretend if you have to, that you believe fully without a doubt that God's got the power to do anything you need him to do. Amen. Now, he may not do it the way you want him to. That's right. And you may also want to remember that sometimes he says no. Bless him. And I'm glad that sometimes he said no. Hallelujah. Because I've seen the, the past of what it could have been. And it's good. We have to trust and do it the way he wants us to. Now, some of you may even still be in a storm of some kind, with finance or with loss of a loved one, with sickness or something. But it's okay. It says, be of good cheer. Do not worry. You're going to make it through. You're halfway through the stupid mud puddle now. you got a choice. Go halfway and get out, or go halfway and have to start all over and go through the whole thing again. Amen. Go all the way through, man. Amen. With God, you can do it. I've done it. I'm living proof. I know there's others out here. Uh, at least five or six out here, and I'm sure if you want to talk with Big Jim, he can let you know that God will get you through anything. Yes. You know what? There's proof living out here, and that's what our life's supposed to be. Not bragging rights for something stupid we did, but proof for certain that we made it through, that we did it. And it wasn't by our doing, but by the grace of God, the love of Jesus. And that's what we got to keep fighting for, because defeat is an attitude. You're never defeated unless you give up and give in and quit. Amen. It's an attitude. If you got the attitude of a winner, it may take a little longer, but you will win. You will come through. A positive attitude will take you through almost everything. A negative one says, oh, man. I had people come up and say, hey, man, you wouldn't want to hire me. I says, no, I don't think so. I used to go look for a job in one particular place. It was with a, a state position. I finally made it to the, the final uh, interview. And he looked at me and uh, says, okay, you're going to be content if we hire you to, to work 20 years in this department and do a job for us? I said, no, sir. He says, well, then what? So I'm going to take your chair. I want the chair of the top dog, man. I'm not going to settle for taking this one job for 20 years. I'm going to take over. I went to work that day. You want a positive attitude. It doesn't matter that I was broke. It didn't matter that I didn't even know how to handle the job I was getting ready to hire. I'm one of them people that gets myself in trouble once in a while, but someone says, you can't do that. You don't know how. Then watch me. Watch, that's right. That's Sometimes right. it doesn't work real well, but again, I've never failed. I've just learned many, many, many ways that things won't work. And I don't recommend you trying them. Now, joy is, is a decision. Joy don't mean you're going to bounce around and dance and sing and jump and all that. It means that you are content. You're not sad. You're not depressed. You are content with the situation, knowing you're going to make it through. And the knowing that you're going to make it through the storms of life, man, it is such a peaceful thing. When you don't have to worry, when you don't have to stress out, we need to make sure we keep it going. There, there's a, a weird little story about a couple of frogs. Some of you may have heard it. It's old, and I'm not a good joke here. That's what I need Frankie for. <laughs> he he, he brings it a lot better than I can, but these two little frogs, for some of you folks that have been around the dairy field, when you milk the cow, there's a lot of butter and stuff and creams in there. And the way you make the butter is you churn it and you just keep paddling and stuff and then finally you get some butter. Well, these two frogs fell in this pail. One of them, he just didn't have what it takes. He had a negative attitude. Never, he hadn't served God and didn't believe. 
And he finally his poor little legs got tired of paddling and stuff, and he just said he gave up and he sank to the bottom and drowned. The other little frog, he had a lot more heart, and he just kept kicking them poor little legs. He didn't care how much it hurt. He kept on, and all of a sudden, the cream started turning into butter, and it got stolen. He started climbing. He jumped right, right out of that pail. Right it is go. not over until it's over. Right Your story go. is not finished, as Bobby right. will let you know on some of his day. Your story does not end until the day you take your last breath. Hallelujah. It changes from day to day, from time to time. Don't give in. Don't give up. Don't give out. Just because you're in a storm of life, God will be with you. There's also a scripture that says, nothing about it ever says it would be easy, but it is worth it. And I've got to prove that too. Now then, you may get uh, bruised, but I promise and not miss me, God promises you won't lose. You may even see a little bit of pain and feel a little pain, but if you stick it through and make it all the way, you'll also receive the gain. Some of you guys that, that, that work out maybe in the, the gyms and stuff, obviously I'm not one of them, but they say no pain, no gain. Well, I don't like pain, so I never saw no need to go into one of them. But everything comes at a cost. But with God, you can do all things. You'll make it through. There's nothing that can stop you. You see, the enemy cannot make you do anything. He does not have the power to rob you unless you okay it. Now, again, God's a gentleman, and he ain't going to take away none of your problems unless you give it to him. He'll receive it, but he won't take it from you. So keep in mind that you must give up whatever your storm is and let God take it. And don't give in to the enemy and allow him to rob you. With Jesus, you'll make it. But you don't want to be looking uh, at the destruction or distractions or feeling defeated, because that'll take you out. And on November 2nd, back in 92, it's probably the only verse that I kind of memorized because my mind don't work so good. I have to have notes. My late wife and I, we, we, we sang and we performed here and there for 20 years the same song over and over. And to this day, I still cannot tell you all the words in any one verse of a song I've sang for 20 years. She could tell you all of them, but I can't. I have to have my notes. But we're all different, aren't we? Either way, we all make it through. But this was with Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. There's a trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will lead your path. I have to trust in him because I've seen my ways, and they don't as far as his understanding, man, don't even bother to take, waste the time to explain it, because I probably won't get it, and I'll forget what you said ten minutes later. But I do try to acknowledge him in all my ways, because I know some of my ways are a little bit stupid. That wasn't his. That was my bad choice again. But I do know that if you allow it, he'll lead you on a path that is good. It's peaceful. It's nice. I'm not saying it's going to be smooth. You're going to have some detours, some bridges out. You may have to turn that scooter around and head a different way. But an obstacle is only an opportunity to, for you to find that other way. It's not the end, it's not the, the downside of your story, it's just the beginning of a new one, a new direction, and who knows? Maybe that road that God sends you down isn't the one you wanted to go through. But like the tail of the dragon, it'll get you through all the twists and the currents and still give you more excitement than you can ever imagine. If your life is boring, you're just playing, and you're a Christian, and you're sitting in church, and everything's just kind of nothing going on with you, you may not be doing what he wants you to do. Enemy don't mess with people, don't do nothing wrong. Right. If you're not against him, he's going to leave you alone. But remember that it's God that does the battle, not you. Man. We need to make sure that we get out there and look for the lost. I was one of the lost. And I can promise you now, I even tried a couple times. I rode my own knucklehead, man. We rolled up to this church. Back then I had a t-shirt and Levi's. And, well, my hair was a little bit longer. Church people didn't want me there. Go clean up, come back on Sunday. Yeah. Fine, I'm out of here. You know what? This is the church right here. Our job is to get out here in the streets and stuff. And that don't mean shove stake down a baby's throat. That don't mean beat somebody up with your Bible. That means show some compassion, some empathy, some love through the love of Christ. Get out and show them that there is a better way. And it's available to them if they want it. If they don't, that's it. Let that person go through their own storm and they'll figure it out. Our job is to tell them, hey, there's a, a back door over here, man. You can slip out there. But it's all up to them. See, we're all accountable. It is a personal relationship between you and Jesus Christ. It's not a collective one with all of us. 
because your best friend, your wife, your husband, your son, whatever it may be, will not be with you on Judgment Day. It is you and Christ alone, and that's it, and there will be nobody to dump an excuse on her. We know how she is, Lord, man. You know, she's always picking her. Nah, -uh, nah, nah. Keep her out of it. You did that because you wanted to. And back in the early days, yes, I did, because she had a lot of buttons. I knew which one to push. It was kind of fun sometimes, but not always. We stopped doing that, and our life got a lot better. But we need to grab a handful of throttle and get out there. Take a wonderful ride. Go where you want. The whole world's your opportunity. If you're open to what God has for you, you will show it. If you're one of the ones that hasn't accepted Christ yet, maybe you've backed off. Maybe you've slipped. Maybe something or someone has convinced you that it's just not worth it. Don't be putting your eyes on a preacher, on a deacon, on, on a church member. Man, put your eyes on God because we're going to blow it. We make mistakes. We may misspeak once in a while and not uh, even know it. God won't beat you up. Man. He'll encourage you. He'll lift you up. Go with that. Focus on him and it doesn't matter. I got to travel to 100 different churches for a while. And everyone I went in, I did not care. Whether they liked me or shook my hand, looked at me, talked to me. Because I wasn't there for that. I was there to get a word of encouragement that I needed to move on to the next town. Bring it, brother. And if you do that, you'll keep your eyes on Jesus and the world can't take it away from you. That's right. Church often don't do it. Because you will not find a perfect church. And the biggest reason you won't is because you showed up. That's right. We are not right. perfect people. We're not expected to be. But we have a perfect God that will get us through it. We need to start taking that wild ride. I mean a really wild one. The full throttle on roads that only God can handle. The twist and the turn. They're awesome. I don't know about some of you, but they're nothing like hitting them running board on the ground on one corner after another. But be careful because sometimes it's your own choice and you miss that corner. It's been almost 30 years since I missed the last corner, but it can happen. But you know, it's time to stand up, pray up, and get real with God. No more excuses. Well, you know, I was busy today. You know, I had something else to do. I said, that's too bad. I have something great for you, but I guess I'll give it to the next person. No excuses, man. Do what you're supposed to do. And do it from the heart. In Genesis 50, verse 20, and I'm paraphrasing, it says, they thought evil against me. That's the world. The world thought evil against me, evil against you. They want to do something to disrupt your life, to get you off track. God used it for good. I've had things I thought were devastating. It turned out that if I hadn't gone that way and it hadn't happened, I would not have had one of my bikes. I wouldn't have had the house I'm living in. Do as God asks you to do. And no matter what comes against you, know that God will turn that around. And he will use that for an example to show what he can do through anybody that's willing. It's not over yet. If you're saved, get up and start riding with God. Show what you can do. Show what he can do. Pray with thanksgiving, not worry, because see, sometimes we that's that's where we kind of back up. Oh God, get me out of this one, you know. Help me out here. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Well, that, that's a prayer of desperation. That's for the unbelievers. Once you become a believer, there's no more, oh help me out. No more begging. Now you can start saying, Thank you, God, for getting me through this mess. Right. Thank you, God, for covering my expenses. Thank you for taking care of my Amen. needs. Amen. And he will. Thank him. I believe, and I can't quote this one though. In the scriptures it says, if or when my people humble themselves, seek my face, turn from their evil and wicked ways, which could be anything from just a little white lie on, then, not before, then I will hear their prayers from heaven and heal their land, their land can be your body. Once you get serious with God, he gets real with you. Until then, he's just going to say, well, you don't need my help. You know it all. Don't let it happen. For those of you that maybe, again, have slipped back, maybe you've never accepted Christ. I never denounced him, but I didn't believe in him. I thought when you died, you'd come like that piece of wood. And to me, that was peace. No more nightmares, no more terrors. I since learned I was wrong. And there's a peace that cannot be described. And I'm ready for it when he's ready for me. I have work to do. But if you have not ever accepted that, I urge you to read the book of Romans. 
you know what, it'd take an hour out of your life. What do you got to lose? If you don't like what it has to say, you've lost nothing. If you read that and find out that all that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But there's rules and conditions to that. If you accept that, you have a lot to lose. You, have, you get to lose anguish, frustration, depression, sadness. There's so much you lose, but you gain so much more, a peace, a contentment. And I have no idea what else, whatever your need may be, and each of us is different. But in Romans, it makes it clear that there is a punishment for our sin, and we've all sinned, and we probably all have even this morning at some point or a time, one way or another. There is a not no big sin, little sin stuff. I don't know where that comes from. There's one, two, three, four, five. One, you know what? It's all a mark. It's all the same. The guy that cut me off this morning, forgive me, Lord. You know what? It was raining. Maybe they didn't see me. Who knows? But we've all sinned and we've all come short of the glory of God. There's no shame in that. That's because we're humans. That's just the way it is. Ask him to forgive you. He will. But that punishment is death. And it's a spiritual death, not a physical death. Physical is easy, man. You fall over, you're done. The spiritual death is separation from God himself. Separation from the light, from the love. And I cannot imagine how torturous that could be. But all that call on the name of the Lord in Romans will say, say, if you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, and that God raised him from the dead, you should be saved. You can confess it with your mouth. Let people know. More than that, though, I think, and this is only my opinion, you need to show it with your actions. That's right. Show it. You don't even have to use a word. Say, man, what's up with you? You're doing good. But I urge you that if God's calling you, and if you're here today and you haven't accepted Jesus Christ, if you're watching online and you haven't accepted, I think, again, only my opinion, there's a reason you're here. There's a reason you're watching. Just maybe God's saying, step up, come home. I love you. I don't care what you've done. You're forgiven. Come on home. Pastor Frankie, if you come up, do the clothing, please. You know. Bottom line is, God cares about you. He restore you. He's got enough mercy and grace for everybody. Jesus loves you, and at RCBC, so do we. God bless. How we doing, folks? that so if you just give me five minutes we'll close out here i don't know about you guys but i don't like problems you know i remember when i first started uh reading the bible i came to a verse and it said you know when you experience problems and trouble you should count it as joy that's right and uh, and i read that and i was like I, I can't read this stuff no more yeah. this is this is crazy you know and I was in my 20s when I read that, and I said, yeah, I know most of the Bible's true, but I don't know about that part. And uh, the funny thing is, the older I get, the more sense it makes, okay? Again, I don't like problems. None of us like problems, right? We don't wake up in the morning and say, man, I can't wait for things to go sideways today, right? None of us do that. A couple weeks ago, we experienced a storm. Old Milton came through. I don't know if you were watching the news, but they said it was going to be the Armageddon. Obviously, it wasn't. Uh, but, you know, regardless, it was a storm. And it got me thinking that two years ago, at the same time, another storm came through called Ian. You guys remember that? And... I started thinking about other storms that have happened. And, and I remembered a storm that I experienced that I'll never forget. It was in 2000. And I was living in Oklahoma at the time. And I don't know if you, you've ever been to Oklahoma or lived in Oklahoma, but they have these things called tornadoes, okay? And uh, they're, not, they're not fun, okay? We'll just put it that way. And uh, I was commuting from Oklahoma City to a place called Altus, which is 50 miles past nowhere. And it was a two and a half hour drive home. And in that two and a half hours, I'm not exaggerating, 50, over 50 tornadoes touched down 
in the area that I was driving through. I went through Ardmore, Oklahoma. I went through all these different towns, and I'm listening on the radio, and it said tornado touchdown here, and, and I had just passed that town. And when the, I don't know if you know, but Oklahoma's flat. And when the, the lightning would strike, you could see the tornadoes. You could literally see the tornadoes. And you know what happens when you experience a storm like that? Your prayer life changes. Right now, brother. Okay? Right you go from, God, I hope I have a good day today, to seeking him with all your might. Okay, it goes from maybe a little prayer to all of a sudden that is your priority. And it's only through these storms, it's only through these difficulties in life that we look to God for our answers. Because most of the time we just try to do our own thing and we think everything's hunky-dory, right? Oh, I'm good today. I don't need God. And guys, that's a lie. That's a lie. It's only through these trials and tribulations that we can learn to trust him. There's a, a passage in John, John 16, verse 33. It says, in this life, you will experience tribulation okay, or trouble. And what's funny is when I was younger, I used to think that if I became a Christian, everything was going to be hunky-dory, right? Everything was going to be unicorns and rainbows, right? You guys, anybody? That's what I thought. Because I looked at all these Christians, and, and I thought they had it together, man. That was a lie, too, by the way. But I, I thought, hey, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accept Christ, and everything's going to be great. And it, it just didn't work out that way. And as I said, it, I read in the scriptures, count it as joy when you experience tribulation. Again, I didn't, it didn't make sense to me. But here's what I've recognized. You see, the storms of life, the difficulties we face, not only do they make us stronger, but they turn us toward God. They make us realize how small and how insignificant we really are. You know, a lot of us think, hey, I'm a tough guy. You know, I, I can do this, I can do that. But it's funny when all the tough guys I've met, when they're laying in a hospital bed, ate up with cancer or they're, they're struggling to take their next breath, they're not very tough anymore because we're human. We're human and we will die one day. And I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. I mean, this is Bike Week. We're supposed to be having... Or by October, we're supposed to be having a good time, right? But here's the reality. All of us in our deepest parts know that we're not as strong as people think we are. We're vulnerable, right? And the storms of life show us how vulnerable we are. And it's only then that we look to God. And folks, what I want you to think about is not now... Not right now, because we feel strong right now. We feel capable. We can go home and Bobby just chopped up a bunch of wood at his house. Man, I, I don't like doing that stuff. I don't know about anybody. But... We all, we feel strong. We're, we're healthy, right? But one day, one day, we're going to be at the end of our life. One day. And for most of us, we think, ah, oh, that's going to be 20, 30, 40 years from now. we got plenty of time, folks. We don't know that. Amen. It is appointed unto every man wants to die, and then comes judgment. That's what the scriptures tell us. And, and, you know, Rex was talking about it. When that happens, when that light switch goes out, where will you be? Where will you be? Because there's only two places. You see, we think... There's all kinds of people. We think, hey, we got black people, we got white people, we got yellow people, we got whatever. Folks, we got two kinds of people. Saved people and unsaved people. That's it. Okay? And so, it all comes down to what you believe in your life. 
Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us is a sinner. I don't know if you know that or not. But all of us is a sinner, meaning that we have broken God's law. We have a price and a debt to pay. Romans 6, 23 tells us, for the wages, for the payment of our sin is death, spiritual death, separation from God. A lot of you have heard this before. But you can have that head knowledge. You can know that. You can grow up in church all your life and never do anything about it. I want you to put that storm in your mind right now. Remember how you feel or how you felt during that time. You felt vulnerable, right? Well, that's how you're going to feel at the end of your life. And what would you give to come back to this place? Right now, 20 years from now, come back to this place and make the choice to follow Jesus. What would you give to do that? Because I'm going to tell you, that's what you are going to wish when you're in that situation. Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's what it says. You believe, you confess. Let me tell you. Do it just in case. Yeah. Okay? Let me tell you. When, when I was younger, I was like, hey, that sounds like a good deal, man. I just I just get on my knees and I pray and I'll call out to Jesus. I'm going to do that. And I did. I went to a bathroom, mobile station bathroom, true story. Got down on my knees. I said, oh, God, please save me. I'm dead serious, right? I, I prayed that prayer, and I signed my fire insurance policy, right? I figured, hey, what's it going to hurt? And then all of a sudden, things changed. Yeah, no unicorns, okay? You don't need to give me any medication. No unicorns, all right? No rainbows. But my life did change. And I know God's got a sense of humor because I'm up here preaching now. Yeah. He's Amen, funny, brother. man. He yeah. is funny. Yeah. Amen, brother. And I tell you what, guys. It's not going to cost you anything to pray that prayer. It's not going to cost you anything. But if you don't pray that prayer, it's going to cost you everything. That's right. Everything. Everybody's seen... Those signs at the football games, you know, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, right? That's, you guys have all seen that. But yet, it becomes so commonplace in America, it becomes so redundant that we just kind of ignore it. Kind of like stop signs. You all know what I'm talking about? We see them, but we just kind of ignore them. Folks, don't ignore this message if you're looking for a sign that's your sign there you go you guys know bill Ingall? here's your sign right this is your sign yeah. there you go. god wants you to follow him he wants you to repent of the things you know you're doing wrong he wants you to put those things behind you take up your own cross and follow him and I promise you, the storms of life will seem very different. God bless you guys. I hope you have a wonderful Biketoberfest. Be safe out there.